Good morning. Welcome to this Saturday's edition of Site Builder Saturday. Today's topic will be planning your website, website page layouts. And why this is so important is because when you sit down to create your website, you want to be sure that you're focused, that you don't have anything to distract you. And if you've decided ahead of time on what your layout should look like, it makes things smoother. It makes it really easy for you to move forward and build your design. So if you have not been watching for the past few weeks, we've been talking about steps to plan your website. This is step five of eight, and if you've missed any of the prior steps, you can catch them here on my Facebook page. I've left all the live publications up and running for you to check, check it out. So another reason why you might wanna do this is that when you're creating your website, you can easily get distracted by mid-build changes. And anything that takes you away from the task of doing what you started out to do makes your timeline longer, makes it harder, and creates a lot of rework. So these are the steps that I use when I create custom websites for my clients. And I wanna share them with you if you're building your own website or adding on to your website so that you can make it easier to get those things accomplished. So we're gonna look at some layouts in a couple moments and I'll just set things up. So if you give me a moment to get that screen up and running, we will take a look at some common layouts. What you're looking at right here is one particular common layout that you'll find on a website. You'll see that at the top we have I'm pointing with the mouse right here, the cursor. We have the navigation elements on the website. We have a top place marker for an image and then a place marker for a headline. So if you use your imagination, you can imagine the image for your particular website here and then a call to action over that image. You'll notice that these three blocks right here are consistently sized and they would have an image and a headline for each, and some tempting text to have your website visitor be motivated to click on the call to action button that you have there. And then you have a footer area, which is common across all the pages. In fact, your top navigation and your footer area should be the same across all your pages and allow for your website visitor to be able to navigate easily and to find everything that you have on your website. Here's another common layout for products. You'll see that we have images for each, the product headlines, a little description, and a call to action, which if you have a store is probably a buy now sort of call to action. And the third common layout is this one we've featured with the About Us page. You would have an image here on the left. You can easily center this as well. Just for illustration purposes, we've kept it on the left. And you write a headline, a couple headlines actually. It's always good to break up the text on a website page because you want to ensure that it provides a guideline for your visitor to read. People don't like to see a lot of text. It's easier for them to break it up as they're reading it if they see the headlines that give the features of what, um, of what is on the page. So there you have it. Those are the common website layouts. Now let's talk about mobile. I'm showing you my website right here, right now. And what I showed you a little bit earlier with the layouts was showing you the desktop view. I wanna show you what happens with mobile when you have those blocks of content that are side by side. And when you're looking for templates, what you should be looking for when you see blocks like that. So if we're looking at the layout of my webpage, you see I have that top image that we talked about. I have several calls to action. And then as we scroll down, I have two blocks. Whereas we looked at three on the layout, I have two blocks here. And I have a call to action with the headline and a little blurb of text. I have another section here and then another section down here. And you can see I have a footer as well. 
Sorry about that scrolling, it was a little too fast. So let's go back up and let's see what happens when this website is viewed in a mobile scenario. So you can see how the content now stacks up right on top of each other. And in particular, these blocks that were two blocks, one on either side prior, now have stacked up on top of each other. So when you're shopping for a template, you really want to be sure that you have a template that is mobile responsive because most people on the web today are looking at your website via mobile. So make sure that you kick the tires and test drive it and see that it does stack up like this on mobile and check out all the other features and see how they all look when you are looking at a mobile design. So I want to Sorry, I'm having a navigation issue here. <laughs> so I want to encourage you to visit my website, thebizpalcompany.com forward slash blog. I have tons of articles there about how to build a website if you're building it yourself. And even if you want to hire somebody to build a website, it doesn't hurt to be informed and to check and see what sort of things you need to consider. Sometimes when we leave it up to our website designer, we may not get the website that we want. So please do check my website for all these articles. I do publish all these videos out there and I do publish additional articles. So go and check it out. It's a great resource if you're building a website or you're doing anything with website marketing. So this was this Saturday's edition of Site Builder Saturday where we touched brief briefly on website layout and the importance of why you need to consider that just so that you can stay focused during the build and help yourself move to that process so that you're not wasting time and energy chasing adding new pages in flight as you're building. Join us next week when we will be talking about colors, website colors and how to pick your colors and what to do with color and so forth on your website. So next week we'll be talking about color. Please tune in. And as usual, I'd like to see if there are any questions that have arisen during the broadcast. So let me just double check. And let's see. Okay. Um, we do have a couple questions. So I did touch on design for mobile. And I wanted to, someone has a question on designing for mobile. And they've asked, what about designing for mobile primarily? And that is a very important question because, as I noted earlier in the session, well over 50% of your website visitors, and in fact, I'll even go as high as perhaps 80%, will be coming and visiting your website from a mobile device. So you want to make sure that everything looks great on mobile first. And that seems to be the pathway. But the good news is that many of the templates that you find out there for whether you're using a WordPress template or you're using a website builder template, many of them have designed for mobile. And you can preview with these tools. You can preview just what it's going to look like on mobile. So always be sure to do that. That's a great question and very important consideration when you're designing a website or building a website or having someone build one for you. So someone asked a question about, well, you have shown us common layouts and I don't wanna be common, I want to be different. And that's fine. How you get to be different with your website is through the magic touch that you add with your own images, your own text copy, and your calls to action. Being different with a website can backfire if you try to go too outlandish and, for example, put your navigation to your website in a really odd place. Many of the website visitors have expectations about how to navigate through a website. So if you have your navigation menu at the very top, very left, or the very right, People have that expectation. They know how to work with it. If you start putting your navigation menu somewhere in a weird place in the center, perhaps, or haphazardly everywhere, 
it could be um, it could be a problem and it could cause someone to not find what they're looking for on your website. So really remember the goal is for you to sell your products and services, to encourage interest in your products and services, and to keep people on your website. So you don't want to confuse them by moving the navigation into a weird spot or to make your website so different that they can't figure out how to navigate or how to get around. So I don't see any more questions, so that's all for now. This was this Saturday's edition of Site Builder Saturday, and join us next week. Happy website building. Bye-bye.